Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to make a home energy monitoring system just like this one using a few off the shelf parts. The first thing I want to address is the kilowatt. These devices are great if you're trying to analyze something that's plugged into a wall outlet, but the problem with that is most wall outlets are designed only to carry about 15 amps and they're only designed for use with 120 volt devices. When you want to analyze something else, such as a well pump, a furnace fan, your air conditioner, or other things that might use 240 volts, be directly wired into a panel, or be rated for more than 15 amps, then you need something else in order to help narrow down what's using electricity in your house. My goal with this stuff is to make a home energy monitor that allows me to break down my electricity usage circuit by circuit without costing as much as the commercial home energy monitoring systems. Most commercial energy monitoring systems don't provide monitoring for more than around eight circuits without the cost skyrocketing to a few hundred dollars. Just a word of warning before we get into any of this, don't do anything in this guide if you aren't comfortable working with electricity. You could die. You will need a large box. I chose a junction box big enough to fit my energy meters from the homeless despot. And you will need two split core energy monitors as well as an extension cord and some wire nuts. The reason for using split core transformers in this project is because with a solid core transformer, when you try to go analyze a circuit, what you actually need to do is feed the wire through the transformer. This becomes a problem because a lot of large gauge wire and house wiring is very stiff and hard to move around. And in that case, you would also need to remove the wire from the circuit breaker in order to insert it through the transformer. A split core transformer allows you to clamp around the wire without having to do any tinkering inside your electrical panel. The first thing I'm going to do is mark off where my energy meters are going to be on the outside cover of the box. I'm marking them on the inside so I can avoid this little o-ring here for sealing the box. So once you've made your cuts into the cover, you can install your two energy meters into the box. When cutting this, I found that using a jigsaw worked best. Just drill a hole that's larger than the blade at two of the corners and then saw from there. So next, snap the two energy meters into the panel. So next, take a look at the back of the energy meter. They have a circuit diagram showing how to hook this up. And the top two screws for both of these, you can see that's where the current transformer is supposed to be wired in. Make sure you connect that in there and do not connect your 120 volt supply to those leads. For the bottom two screws, that shows as being connected directly across in parallel with your load. And that's where you want to connect your live and neutral. And the truth is it doesn't matter which order you have your live and neutral in here as long as it's on the bottom two screws because these meters aren't sophisticated enough to know which way the current is in relation to the voltage that they're sensing from the line. And you'll hook both of these voltage sources up in parallel, and that's where the extension cable comes in, is you're going to connect the live and neutral from this extension cable to both of these on each energy meter. It doesn't matter which one is where, as long as they're on the bottom two screws. When cutting your extension cord, make sure to leave on the end with the prongs, and then after you've drilled a hole in the side of your box, you can insert the extension cord into your box. After installing the wire into your box, you can take the two wire nuts and join together your white wires and your black wires. You want to join all the white wires on one wire nut and the black wires on the other wire nut. And do not mix them together, otherwise you'll cause a short circuit and it'll blow once you plug in your box. So the next thing that we're going to deal with are the split core transformers. The problem with these is that the supplied wires are very short and it makes it hard to reach the wires inside your panel when using the energy monitor. Next, connect the current transformer wires to the meter. Again, the labeling on the back will tell you where to do this. The current transformer is the device labeled CT on both of these and goes in the upper two screw holes. The next thing you will want to do is label the meters and then label the transformers accordingly. Once you've installed your meters upside down, correct the labels on the meters. Since I cannot read Chinese, I had to figure out how the meter's buttons worked just by playing with them. A short press will turn the backlight on and off. If you do a long press, you 
get the option to clear the meter. If you hold it for a short period of time, you can clear the power. And then when it starts going bonkers, a short press will fix that. And if you would like to reset the energy, hold the button until it stops showing set clear. Then you press the button to reset the energy. And now for the most dangerous part of this project, opening your electrical panel. Install your clamps around the circuits you would like to measure. Once you have your clamps installed, you can check the power rating on your meter. I chose to look only at the instantaneous power, but if you wanted, you can make a chart like I have here and use this to record the energy that you use over time. So you could put this on one set of circuits for 24 hours and then read the energy usage after that period has elapsed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please rate, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. See you next time.